Yes, the program is still for the record and it's our brand new season. We had a fantastic break during the Christmas period, you know, to re-energize, recalibrate and get everything up and running. And now we're in the last two segments of our very, very first edition in 2019. And I'm sitting with a friend, a brother, a guru, everything, DJ Casey. Aka aka Pole Coca. <laughs> is it Pole Coca? Aka DJ Pole Coca, AKA How you doing, bro? I'm alright, bro. I'm alright. Great to have you. We did this a few years ago. Yeah, well, uh, um, intro. Yeah, this was um, 2000 and 2005, 2004. Yeah, yeah 2004. Four, yeah. 15 yeah. years ago, mm -hmm. and we're doing it again now. Yeah. Um, I need to tell again the story for those who don't know how I met DJ Casey. <laughs> In the early 90s, I came over to the UK. My plan was to come and take over. Because I didn't believe there was any DJ. You remember that time now? Of course. <laughs> and then a friend of mine took me to this place. And for those of you who are watching, who know this story, whoever, if you ever at any point rocked bootleggers yeah. on Margaret Street, a friend of mine said, oh, this is where it's happening. And he took me to bootleggers. And I was like, on the queue trying to get into this club. And I just heard this mix is going. And who is this guy? And I walked in, never seen him in my life. And I went over and I said hi. And we exchanged numbers. And we've been friends ever since. And I think it's one of the best things to happen. To, to not to music generally in the African community. So thank you for that. Thank you, awesome. boss. Thank you, no. bro. And ever since then, but that is like a part two because there was there was a Casey way before that. So I know you from that point up to now. Mm -hmm. But in in two minutes, describe yourself before from your beginning up to that point. Right. Um, I'm not going to talk about my amateur days. Why not? Well, because I was in secondary school then. Okay, it counts though. <laughs> well, true. I started. So you had fans then? Oh yeah, I started at the age of. Um, don't let me say my age. I started when I was in form three. Okay. And um, uh, don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> and I continued and continued, and then um, along the line, I ended up in Abeokuta. Okay. Um, well, it had to do with my father's appointment and everything, so I didn't okay. bring up That was moving around for work and all of that. Yeah, he okay. became a commissioner in Ogun State, and okay. all that. he was appointed a commissioner in Ogun State, and I continued. Then he put me OGBC, put okay. me OGTV. Okay. But all the while, I was just DJing for people for free. And those two stations you meant at that time yeah. were like the leading yeah. in terms of quality. OGBC, OGBC was called the nation's model station then. Indeed. Yeah. We used to tune in from Lagos. And then OGTV was the first UFL, UHF channel. Channel in, in Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. okay. And um, I was just DJing. I didn't care what was happening. I would go to work, but DJing, DJing, DJing. In fact, it got to a point that my dad got annoyed and went to my room and he just took all my records and burnt them. And what I did was, and I had a party that evening okay. when he burnt them in the morning. So the evening, that afternoon, I just went back to Lagos. I bought as many records I could buy to play at the, to party. Play at the party in the evening. And then 1985, I became a professional DJ. I opened a recording studio and, in I, just, in Abeokuta. and I started charging people. Okay. To, and then 89. And how did that take that? Well, he there was a day. Oh, yeah, no, no, there was no, no, no. <laughs> okay, then Buari took over the government then and all that. So exactly, it's twenty-five years. And, yeah. and um, he now came one day. He was passing through and he just said, you know, let me stop by this boy's shop and see what's happening. And he walked in and he saw students from Yabatek paying me, students from Wosu paying me to come and DJ for them. And I was like, oh, now you have money. All right, <laughs> I can call. And that was it. And I've since then it's been. And then nineteen eighty-nine. I started work Ozone, which okay. you missed. We missed each other exactly, then. Exactly, yeah. Briefly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Briefly, yeah. We missed each other then. 1989, I did only three, about three, four weeks Ozone nightclub, and then came to UK. Okay. And I actually came to study sound engineering, which I did finish. In the I UK? Have a, yeah. I have that a was the plan? Yeah. Okay. I have a diploma in sound engineering, okay. but I never practiced it. Was the plan to come, study, and go back? Yes, it was. So what made you stay? Damn. <laughs> um, opportunities. Okay. It was obvious. I mean, you have opportunities now. It was like a barren, yeah, barren land. Yeah, I mean, bro. I will not lie. I was DJing six days a week. I only had Mondays off. Tuesdays, I'll be Hemel Hempstead. Wednesdays, Canterbury. Thursdays, Swindon. Friday, Villa Stefano. Saturdays, house parties, which was happening exactly, there. Yeah. Sundays, stay three, Oak and Road. Exactly, with um, Fidel. With Fidel, yeah. And so, Mondays, you take a rest. Uh, yeah, take a rest. And Tuesday, we start. And I was going all over the place with that man, then Jimmy the Bald Headed Guy. <laughs> shout out to Jimmy the Bald Headed yeah, Guy. Shout out, Jimmy. <laughs> You know. So it's it's been a fantastic journey for you because oh, yeah. really, as at that time, I could only count not more than five, if not even up to that, professional Nigerian DJs. DJs. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So the demand was, and then you came into the scene. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 me I was, no, no, me I was in there. Me I was much later though. <laughs> no, 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 no. What, what do you mean? Yeah, I, no, no, I was, I was much because I you see I, at the time. <clears throat> 
DJ was a passion for me in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It was a passion. And like I said, I living in Nigeria, I just never heard of any DJ in the UK. So I just thought, look, this thing must be a barren land, you know. Mm -hmm. And I kind of had knew the quality of what I had. Mm -hmm. So coming in very, very early into UK and seeing you play, I'm like, ah, oh, God, see this one. <laughs> so how many of them like this are in this terrain? But thankfully, there were not many, yeah, you we know. Many, yeah. And we kicked up a relationship. And we're talking now how many years later? 26 20 years later? Six, yeah. You know, and years. we've seen the terrain grow oh. in that period. This yep. new genre of musical yep. Afrobeats has yep. taken over. Yep. And, and part of why it's important also to have this interview with you is just to let aspiring DJs or some of the young ones who are there now just have a, an understanding of how far this journey is and just let them know there's still a bit, a bit to go. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, one of the, the high points of your, for me personally, mm -hmm. one of the high points was Villa Stefano. Yeah. It was a club in central London. Yeah. You know, it was, and I don't think I missed, if I missed any night, it was just a handful. Yeah, yeah, a handful. You know, yeah, because yeah. It, apart from being a DJ, it was a fantastic gathering. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching and you ever attended Villa Stefano, please call. I want, we're not, we want to take us to speak because yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> what was, how did the Villa Stefano thing happen? Um, this guy called Kolak Edgar. Yes. Was looking for me all over the place. And, uh, and I met up with him somewhere in Asia and he said he wanted to start a nightclub. But it wasn't Villa. He actually started um, somewhere very close to Gulliver's. I forgot the name now. Yeah. West End area. Yeah. yeah. Off just mm -hmm. adjacent to, no. The street was like off Gulliver's. Okay. With Ganton Street. Yeah, Ganton Street, yeah. We went there for the first Friday night. Oh, he actually started on Saturday night. Okay. And we did the first one. And he said, you know what? He's moving somewhere else. So he now moved to um, Central Park. Okay. Which was a high street Kensington. And then we went there. And then this particular night, we went there and the place was shut. And we needed to find an alternative. Then and there. Then, then and there. there. That evening. And, and, he, and he went to Villa. And that was it. And Villa. And actually, Villa would normally open from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. I knew it was a late start. Yeah, it was a very start. awkward yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. But it made and, no difference. Oh, yeah. But it was. Villa rocked. For me, that was Villa a major, rocked. major, major point. You know. In fact, for me as a DJ, that was a time when I just felt... Because I was pretty much doing the private circuit at the time, yeah. private gigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I realized that private gigs will give you the, the, you get the bread and butter thing. Yeah, but not the... You don't get the star quality, yeah. you know. So Which, for me, in my head, <laughs> I just thought, oh, what are we going to do about this? We have monopolized this thing. So that worked greatly. And then you were doing your, um, in South London, you had... Um, state 3. State 3. Old country with Ochiko. A different vibe. Yeah. Also a different vibe. I'll tell you one story about that. When Ochiko actually called me, mm. that you know what, he found a place on the Oak Road, I was like, hell no, I ain't going to Oak Road. Who's going to come there? Because the Western we'll are the yeah, West 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 boys. The Western thing. <laughs> but we tried the first night, and the idea he brought was really nice. It was, he, called, he termed it um, Kokori Jam Session. Kokori, yeah. So he one. started with like a comedy thing, mm -hmm. and then after like um, 11 o'clock, we now started playing music. And before we found out, three, four weeks or two months after, uh, two, yeah, about a month after, the thing just blew. And don't forget, there was a club down the road, uh, the Sierra Leone Club down the yes, road, right, um, where DJ ID Noble used to DJ. Um, what's that one called mm. now? Um, nice club. Yeah, nice club. Just Lovely at the club. beginning of Oak Road. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And before we knew it, bang, State 3 just blew, and it was like, whoa, what's happening here, bro? It and it down. kicked, it kicked, at least we were there for about four years. Exactly, it yeah. ran, and that's the thing about all those nights. Um, you were at Buka for a while, which kind of like became like a signature before you moved to Fantasia. Yeah. It became, because I look at all the places you have played. One thing you've always had, so some of the things I also noticed at the time, you had this cult following. Oh, yeah. Even till today. There are some people you, I saw at gigs at the time, and I still see them today. Yeah. You know, you had this cult following. So I was kind of like understudying a lot of, how does this guy do, you know? <laughs> Very sharp guy. If he, wants, <laughs> if he wants to do a show, we can't do a show on the same day with him, or, you know? So you, you've kind of like built that cult following. So whether it's even small venues or big I think venues, that, I was think that, that deliberate or just an extension of yeah, who you I are? think it started from Abeokuta. Because mm -hmm. I actually stayed in Abeokuta for almost 10 years. Okay. And there was no way you come into Abeokuta that you will not meet me. Mm. So it's like maximum you stay in Abeokuta two years. Mm -hmm. You will always come across. I mean, one day or the other you'll meet. Because it's places. like a satellite town to Lagos. Exactly. There was a lot of activity it's off exactly. Lagos. Yeah. yeah. And then most of those guys, if they want to have their parties in Lagos, they always take me, leave, pick me up from Abeokuta, take me to Lagos to DJ, and then bring me back. So it was like, and to be fair, salute you guys, man, for the support. Salute, man, for this. And they're still supporting. No, it's, it's still unbelievable. Supporting. We're going on a break right now. When we come back, I'm going to be having a chat with Casey on the state of the game right now um, and all the changes and how he's been able to adapt and adjust and keep the brand strong and alive. 
program is still for the record. Stay tuned.